Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh everyone. So alhamdulillah, um, firstly we thank Allah and praise Allah and glorify Allah recognizing his exaltedness and his majesty and his glory especially in times like this when we are reminded how completely and utterly dependent we are on the on the rahma on the mercy of our lord and how we are made aware or we are reminded how much allah's mercy and love and protection has been uh, enriching us and blessing us in our normal day-to-day -day lives sometimes it takes a blessing to be removed for us to appreciate what we've uh, what we have so subhanallah we start with praising and thanking our lord and uh, by allah's grace uh, in this time when the world is facing this uh, this, uh, this unprecedented state of uh, of an international almost lockdown due to the uh, the coronavirus pandemic as you all know and the risk of uh, uh, catching COVID-19. We here at IRFA are trying our best to uh, continue to provide what we can for you in terms of our programming. Uh, SubhanAllah, we were mostly online in any case uh, due to various circumstances. So Alhamdulillah, uh, we pray we can continue with our online and our virtual classrooms and our SubhanAllah, our digitally connected uh, presence and community with each other. So our dhikr, majalis of dhikr have been mostly online for the past few months. So we will continue with that, inshallah. So please uh, try to join. Uh, it's very important in this time that you have a strong regimen of, of dhikr in your life uh, that keeps your spiritual heart strong. Um, and we'll try also to, uh, to write more frequently and send out blog posts as a way of communicating. Um, also, I've started to preface uh, dhikr, or majalis of dhikr with a few comments every week. Uh, inshallah, I hope they are helpful. Uh, for the blog posts, you need to be subscribed to uh, the IRFA website, and then they will come to you automatically. And we will also try to send them out to you in our regular newsletters. Um, in the previous blog post, I mentioned that the first response uh, when we are faced with situations like this is the response from the spiritual heart and indeed our time here on earth is a series of such uh, situations and circumstances that we all have to face it is part of the natural process of our soul evolving uh, this is the plane of discernment dunya imtihan this means dunya is a place of discernment and it is how Allah Azza wa Jal will put us through various, uh, various um, experiences uh, in order to do one of two things, either to purify us or to elevate us. So subhanAllah, it is good both ways. Purification, of course, from all our sins, all our forgetfulnesses, all, all our heedlessnesses, etc., all our ghafla, being in a state of heedlessness. Uh, being in a state of a heart that is rebellious or turned away, etc. To elevate is also to, to raise you up in rank, in your spiritual rank, in your closeness to Allah, in your remembrance of Him, in your worship of Him, in, your, in the purification of your heart, which is an elevation. So subhanAllah, both purification and elevation uh, are blessings and very often they go together you can't say it's this or that it's usually both mm -hmm. so this is the time when we are being tested and we first pray to Allah that he will increase his love upon us uh, that will ensure and assure us that we will pass this test that's the first thing subhanallah and as many of you have pointed out subhanallah we are in a state of being uh, involuntary khalwa <laughs> almost we have been uh, forced in a sense to retreat from our normal day-to-day -day, uh, 
routines from our normal day-to-day -day lives, from our normal day-to-day -day concerns and cares, and forced to be in a state where we have to reflect more on who we are, what we are doing here, where we are going, what the nature of our relationships are with each other, with ourselves, with our goals and aspirations, what is in our heart, our character, and uh, especially our relationship with our Lord, our Creator and Maker, Azawajal, and His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last of His messengers, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those of you who have undergone a khalwa know how beneficial and strengthening and purifying and elevating it is. So alhamdulillah, consider this a time of khalwa, a time of retreating, a time to really reflect and look inward and uh, increase that awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase the closeness we feel with him and increase our determination, renew our intention to uh, get to know our Lord better. And when you get to know, you fall in love. When you fall in love, you become a devoted slave and a worshiper of Allah. And you want nothing, nothing beyond that, subhanAllah. Mm. So we'll talk more about that later on. I don't want this to get too long. Uh, so what I want to say is, inshallah, um, I know how difficult it is, how many challenges that are new you have to face in the day-to-day, -day. challenges with looking after children, with uh, worries about livelihood and income. Uh, so many difficulties that will come. As Muslims and the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our sunnah, our way, has always been that we respond to distress and trials and tribulations first by going to the Quran and hanging on to it. And then by increasing our bond of closeness with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So may Allah bless you all in these times of uh, where you have, I hope, more free time in a sense, or more time away from your normal day to day that you'll spend more time with the Quran, reading, reflecting, etc. And at Irfa, we have had a tradition of having uh, Khatm al Quran, where we get together and we recite the Quran and we complete it. And this is a beautiful tradition that goes back to the earliest generations. Uh, it has always been the source of strength of a community that we gather together purely for the intention of reciting and revering, revering and getting close to the word of Allah. Kalamullah, Azza wa Jal, there is nothing like that, subhanAllah. Mm. So the recitation of the Quran itself brings great blessing. And by calling upon uh, gatherings and reciting the Quran together, uh, it's a source of mercy. It, it makes us recite it more than maybe we would have alone. And certainly it gives us the blessing of having recited the entire Quran just by contributing to a part of its recitation. So subhanAllah, previous uh, khatam, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin, uh, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, I got to make the dua of the khatam in the, <sighs> the Haram Sharif in Makkah al-Mukarramah. That was a great blessing to be able to go before. Now I couldn't have done it. And it was... SubhanAllah, I wanted to go in Rajab, but uh, someone very wise, or rather a few circumstances made me go early, and that was from Allah's barakah. And of course, we've had a khatma before in Toronto when I was there. And that was a great blessing to gather together and finish a... Uh, uh, dua of the khatma and eat together. We can't do that now. But uh, inshallah, going forward, especially in this period, um, we want to institute a regular practice of having a, a khatma of the Quran every two weeks. And uh, uh, the best time for that would be uh, Ayyamul Bid and Ayyamul Sud, uh, the white days and the uh, 
the black days actually the days when the moon is at its fullest which we know is a is a time of great blessing in the months and the days when the when the new moon comes the dark days that is also a time of great blessing though most people don't uh, know that as well as they know the white days so these are times when there is blessing and there is uh, a change in the cycle of the of the the lunar cycle which has implications in our spiritual journey um, hence rabbana azawajal or rather we understand that because allah azawajal swears by uh, or mentions the cycles of the moon and the sun etc in the quran so inshallah we'll start with calling for a gro- global uh, khatmul quran uh, in the middle and in the end of every month and we will make the intention by it to strengthen our hearts our spiritual hearts to bring pe- peace and tranquility into our being into our homes into our families and give us the strength uh, the courage the determination the fortitude the equanimity that we need to um, really uh, benefit f- from this difficult time and and that it is truly a purification and an elevation for us so uh, we invite you to join us and be a part of this endeavor and to make it a success we need all of you to join and it's the strength of the jamaah the strength of being together that's really the hallmark of a muslim community and a muslim ummah the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we will do this virtually alhamdulillah allah has blessed us with the technology and means to do that so as much as there is difficulty in the world our rabbana has also given us uh, ways and means to overcome it subhanallah this is allah's way as a wajal um that's the first thing that i wanted to say so inshallah we'll send out an uh, an email or a notice with this uh, i apologize i've taken i've taken far longer than i thought but i uh, i pray these words these few words are beneficial and inshallah uh we'll also try to increase our programming and offerings online we'll be using youtube and um, maybe also facebook live i'm not uh, we'll uh, try to find better ways of uh, connecting uh, while we develop a new website and a better live stream functionality so um, i invite you all to join us and i ask for your dua and your support and uh, that you'll pray for me and pray for the irfa administration and our foundation uh, that we are able to continue our work to serve our lord and that we all blessed by each other and we thank allah uh, for you and uh, we ask allah to bless you all and bless your families and your homes so with that i'll stop assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala